It's a privilege to be here today to moderate a session among uh, some truly outstanding people. And you know, you have outstanding entrepreneurs in Desh and uh, Dilip, and you have an outstanding representative of intellectual caliber and uh, academia in uh, the professor from IIT, uh, BHU. So the perspectives I think that we're going to gain today are going to be terrific. But most important, it's not about the entrepreneurship, which is obviously key, but I think we have three outstanding human beings, right? So I'm here today when I say I moderate, I'm here actually to learn, because I'm always looking for opportunities to learn, gain new insights, and I'm sure that's going to happen today. So with that in mind, as we discussed, perhaps what we should do is have each of the panelists speak for a couple of minutes, two, three, four minutes, and then we can throw it out to the audience for a Q&A. So please be uninhibited in asking questions. This is a great opportunity to learn, to test your ideas. And if that sounds OK, shall we move forward? And Ajay, I was told we have 40 minutes, so we should stop around 11.10. OK. So let's start with Desh. I'll go in a clock clockwise. Uh, direction. Over to you, Desh. Okay. Well, good morning. <clears throat> you know, I think um, what I've found is that when you start looking at problems as a whole, problems become too complex and, and it's very paralyzing and, and you feel despair <clears throat> and don't quite know what to do. So, the value of the entrepreneurship is breaking these problems up into small things and being able to make a difference. And, and also, it's energizing a lot of people to be able to do that, so that it becomes a part of the culture. So to me, a better world, creating a better world, is about that cultural shift of where people start seeing every problem as an opportunity as opposed to a problem as a problem that nobody can do anything about. And to cause that cultural shift, I found that you can only do it bottom up. You cannot do it top down. You know, I work in Washington, a little bit in Delhi, and, and we have a lot of very, very smart people sitting in these places trying to come up with policies that can make a difference. But very few of them are impactful because there's no ownership of those solutions and, and culturally people don't accept them. And so the idea behind the sandbox is to really enable people and getting them a taste of what it's like to actually pick a problem, become passionate about it and solve it. And once you get a taste of it, you'll never go back and become a complainer again. So sandbox is all about being passionate about something in this life and solving it, solving the problem for the world, but more than that, becoming more happier and being more satisfied with yourself. And, and the beauty of these conferences is that almost everybody here is a self-selected person who belongs to that category. And that's why these conferences are so energizing because we can all learn from each other and draw that inspiration from each other. Fantastic. Thank you, Desh. So I have some questions, but we'll wait till all the speakers have spoken. Over to you, Professor. The topic is what I would translate it as global thought, local action. I Hindi in Hindi and I listen to a story. This is real. A town Kanpur ke paas, उसका सर्वे किया गया पहले इनकम के कितनी आय है ये करीब 10 साल पुरानी बात होगी आय निकली 4 करोड़ 4 करोड़ ठीक ठाक गांव है लेकिन ऐसा भी नहीं कि बहुत क्योंकि उस गांव में शायद 4000 लोग हैं तो कोई बहुत ज्यादा पैसा नहीं है फिर खर्च निकाला गया उसका व्यय कितना है वो पैसा किधर जा रहा है मोटा मोटा इसमें ये निकला कि दो करोड़ रुपया जरूरत की चीजों में जा रहा है खाना पीना कपड़े और अन्य चीजें 
साठ लाख रुपया शराब सिगरेट जर्दा गुटका मोटरसाइकिल एंड पेट्रोल गांव में शायद पांच कार भी है और पचास मोटरसाइकिल और खर्च देखा गया सब के बावजूद एक करोड़ रुपया बच गया वो एक करोड़ रुपया सेविंग है उस गांव की प्रति वर्ष सरकार उस गांव को कितना पैसा देती है जो सीधा ग्राम पंचायत के पास आता है डेढ़ लाख पूरी पॉलिटिक्स है उस डेढ़ लाख को कैप्चर करने के लिए उस गांव के पास कितना पैसा है एक करोड़ प्रतिवर्ष कितना अस्सी गुना सत्तर गुने का फर्क तो जब तक हम इस बात को नहीं समझेंगे कि हम सक्षम हैं हमारे पास रिसोर्सेज हैं उनका उपयोग करना है तब तक हम तरीके ढूंढ सकते हैं पर तब तक मुख्य मेन धारा वो जो है उसको हम नहीं प्राप्त कर सकते अब चलते हैं उस गांव के स्कूल की तरफ उस गांव के स्कूल में तीन अध्यापक सरकारी स्कूल कोई पढ़ाने आता है कोई नहीं आता है गांव के लोगों से बात करिए हमारे स्कूल पढ़ स्कूल में पढ़ाई नहीं होती उस गांव में सर्वे किया कितनी महिलाएं पढ़ी लिखी हैं पचास महिलाएं जिनके पास बी ए बी की डिग्री है वो घर में बैठी है और उस गांव में तीन अध्यापक भी नहीं है पचास अध्यापक पोटेंशियल अध्यापक मौजूद हैं लेकिन तीन अध्यापक भी गांव के पास नहीं है अब आते हैं हेल्थ सेंटर हेल्थ सेंटर में शायद एक डॉक्टर है जो कभी कभार आ जाता है उस गांव के पास इतना पैसा है कि वो एक गांव एक डॉक्टर को नौकर रख सकता है उसको नौकरी दे सकता है उसे चालीस हज़ार रुपया दे सकता है कि आओ यहाँ रहो हमारी देखभाल करो ये जो समझ है हम इकोसिस्टम की जब बात करते हैं तो हमें एक चीज़ देखनी होती है कि हमारे पास क्या संसाधन है अधिकांश जगहों पर हमारे पास संसाधन हैं हमारे पास इको नहीं है हमारे पास जो व्यवस्थाएं बनी हुई हैं वो लोगों के लिए नहीं बनी हुई हैं या लोगों के लिए काम नहीं कर रही हैं इसके लिए हमें क्या करना है इस पर सोच की आवश्यकता है और एक नेचुरल इकोसिस्टम होता है एक ह्यूमन इकोसिस्टम होता है नेचुरल इकोसिस्टम अपने आप काम करता है अगर मानव का इंटरवेंशन ना हो तो पृथ्वी आज पूरे वनों और जंगलों से सजी भी होती जो ह्यूमन इकोसिस्टम है उसमें हम जब गलत इकोसिस्टम बनाते हैं तो ये दिक्कतें आती हैं तो किस प्रकार हम ऐसे इकोसिस्टम बना सकें जो हमारे लिए हो, जो नेचुरल हो, जो एक गांव के लिए हो, हर व्यक्ति के लिए हो, तो ये मुझे लगता है आज का चैलेंज है इसकी शुरुआत कहाँ से हो इसकी शुरुआत एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप और अन्य चीज़ें जिनके बारे में आपने बहुत काम किया है लेकिन इसको सस्टेन करने के लिए इसको और आगे ले जाने के लिए एक सोच की आवश्यकता है एक समझ की आवश्यकता है एक समझ कि मेरे पास क्या है और कैसे मैं सबसे मिल एक साथ रह के कुछ कर सकता हूँ इस समझ के लिए हमें काम करना होगा इसमें संवेदनशीलता भी है इसमें इमोशंस भी हैं इसमें साइंस भी है और इसमें एक होलिस्टिक थॉट भी है तो एक होलिस्टिक थॉट की आवश्यकता है और मैं स्वयं इस होलिस्टिक थॉट के तहत ही काम करता हूँ और मेरा शिक्षा में यह प्रयास है कि ये विचार ये एक होलिस्टिक थाट के रूप में सब जगह आ जाए और इसमें आई आई जो भी भूमिका अदा कर सकती है वो आप हमको भी बताइए और धन्यवाद थैंक यू प्रोफेसर
I think we've had two uh, brilliant people talking with some great insights, the natural and human ecosystems, the need for bottom-up change, not just depend on top-down. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ramji. Uh, well, you know, as, as Director IIT, Professor Zangal said, um, you know, we have what it takes. You know, I'm, I'm really very excited. You know, I, I, I'm 41 years old, but, you know, I feel that, you know, I feel like 20 today because our country today is poised so in a, such an exciting way that we have so much opportunity to build a country that we've always dreamed of. So I'm really excited. And I think, you know, if I look at what our country has, you know, we talk about the youth in our country, and we say we need to unlock the potential in our youth. Now, where is this youth? You know, this youth is staying across India. You know, it's, it's in deeper India, small town India, rural India, it's spread across India. There are over 600 districts in India. So effectively, if you have to tap into the youth, we have to reach out to them. What excited me about the sandbox and the concept that Desh and his team started was that, that this identified a few districts around which someone can go and set up what we're calling the sandbox and engage with the youth in that area. And I think it's such a great concept because what it does is imagine a situation where we've got the Exot sandbox in Varanasi, which is covering six districts around Varanasi. There are 600 districts around India. So all you need is 100 sandboxes across India, you know, connecting the youth of India. Because at the end of the day, you know, we, know, we need to you know, tap into this you know, vibrant energy that the youth in our country have. How are we going to tap into it? So for example, you know, when we started the Sandbox, the lead program, which some of you have been exposed to in the video today, has been such a wonderful way to engage with the youth in Varanasi and the six districts around Varanasi. I myself have been surprised by the amount of young people coming in from colleges who've got so many bubbling ideas and who felt, you know, we never thought we'd be able to do this, but we can. And so, I, you know, we talk about job creation, we talk about the lack of jobs and all that. You know, today I see many of these youth, you know, taking up projects and they're feeling that they can actually become job creators rather than job seekers. And I think, you know, it's a great way to build. Someone said yesterday that in our country we need moral consciousness, we need civic sense. Uh, you know, why do we need a Swachh Bharat campaign? Why can't we, in general, just feel that, you know, we can keep our house clean, areas around clean? Why do we need this top-down message? I've engaged with students in working in Varanasi in the LEAD program, and many of them have just taken on these projects of cleaning the ghats, you know, and just getting on and doing things on the ground. Right? So, at the end of the day, I totally agree with Desh when he says that we need a bottoms-up uh, you know, uh, way forward. Top-down is good, but if things need to happen, they need to happen bottoms-up. And I think you know, today, for, for us at the Exot Sandbox, working for the last one year, I just feel the deep single-minded focus of working in these six districts, engaging with social entrepreneurs, getting them to come here, you know, and getting them to work in this region is just exposing one to the tremendous opportunity that this region has to offer. And I think, you know, things like this can then be replicated across India. So to me, I think the key is to tap into the vibrant youth because they don't take no for an answer. They do not say that this cannot be done because they don't know any, any better. You know, Desh and I were talking earlier and he said, you know, as you age, Sometimes experience goes against you because you start feeling, oh, you know, ye nahi ho sakta. You know, yeah, you come to, you know, and it cannot happen, right? But young people don't take no for an answer because at the end of the day, they're full of energy, they've got time on their side, they want to go and build the country of the future. So, you know, we are a young country, and, you know, 20, 30 years out, when we're celebrating 100 years, these 20 year old kids will, will, you know, have the opportunity to say, you know, when our country turns 100, what do we want our country to look like? So I think there's a great opportunity. I'm very, very excited. And then the only other point I would make is that today we're getting the tools and the platforms that can enable us to solve problems. When we talk about health, education, other livelihood programs, agriculture and all that, one of the big things that's happening in our country is use of technology. And again, this marriage of youth and deployment of technology and use of technology 
can be a very, very compelling you know, proposition. I, I come from the technology sector. I, I've, I've, I've witnessed center stage the mobile revolution that's happened in our country. And I tell you, you know, this is unparalleled to the world. So when we talk about Jam, we talk about Jandhan, Aadhaar, and mobile. This is you know, something which has not happened globally anywhere. Every citizen getting a unique identity, having a bank account, and having a mobile phone. Imagine if you take this platform and as a young person innovate using it. You know, whether the Save a Mother program, uh, you know, sending SMS campaigns, you know, using voice, everyone has a mobile phone, so you can literally connect with every Indian citizen. It's up to the youth to say, how do we leverage technology to build solutions to solve our local problems? Because at the end of the day, everything has to be adapted to local environment and local conditions. So the combination of the youth, the use of technology, and the sandbox concept coming together, working deeper in a region, engaging social entrepreneurs, is really a lethal combination that really excites me. And I'm looking forward to not only the Exot sandbox, but hundreds of sandboxes coming across India and really building a new India. Thank you. Fantastic. You know, uh, I'm reminded before we go to questions, I read uh, as a young man in 1979, or relatively young, I read uh, an interview with uh, Mr. J.D. Birla. And he said, uh, and it still sticks in my mind because it's very relevant to what we are talking today. He said, look, we have all the ingredients for making the kheer, the, the uh, ghee, the sugar, the uh, rice, the milk, and if you want to throw in a few spices. We have all of that, but we are unable to make the kheer. And I think we are hearing some of that here. And I've often wondered why that's the case. He talked about how nature attacks that problem, and maybe we can learn something from that. But perhaps the social innovation sandbox is the solution to that. And, uh, but that will all depend on you, because uh, I think Desh and Dilip and Professor can act as catalysts, but ultimately it's what you do, what you think. So over to you. What are your questions? What are your concerns? What are your aspirations? Go for it. Yeah, uh, I'm Bhupendra Shandil. I'm from Chetna Organization, is working with the student working children in Delhi and the UP parts. Uh, from last days, I have some uh, question in my mind, but here I think I have uh, asked one question only. So, yeah, go ahead, go with okay. your question. So my question is, what is the basic difference between business and entrepreneurship? So, you know, entrepreneurship is about looking at the world and saying, it doesn't have to be this way, it can be better. So you see a change that you can bring forward to the world, and then you become passionate about it, and you bring about that change. When you bring about that change, it could take different forms. Sometimes you come up with a change where it has a huge benefit and your customer base are the people who have a lot of disposable income and they can pay for it. And they can pay a lot more than what it costs you to bring about that change, in which case it becomes a very profitable business. Sometimes you can also direct the solution to people who don't have a lot of money, but it's still so valuable that they can pay a little bit more than what it costs you, and it becomes a free market enterprise that brings about the change. Sometimes the change that you bring forward is a very powerful change, but the people that you're trying to target, your customer base, does not have the ability to pay for the cost that you need to bring about that change. In which case, you still have to articulate what is it that the value that you're bringing to the world, and somebody else has to pay for that cost. Some cases, it's the government. Some cases, it's philanthropists and charitable donors. But I, I try not to differentiate too much between a, an entrepreneurship that you build for business and entrepreneurship that you build for a social innovation. Being an entrepreneur in the social innovation space is actually a lot harder because you know, the resources are not that easily available. And secondly, in the for-profit business, you have a customer, and the customer has choice. And so it's a very powerful feedback tool as to whether the customer buys from you and whether he pays for it. And that feedback loop always 
keeps you centered in terms of doing things that people really want. Whereas in the nonprofit sector, a lot of times you're helping people that really can't pay for it. And therefore, the social entrepreneur has to be even more astute in making sure that the interventions that you're trying to bring about actually are impactful and, and, and you know, co-opt the people that you help into that, that whole process. So I think Sandbox is about doing that, you know, coming up with solutions together with the people that will benefit from the cause. That's why today, when they lit the lamp, it was all the people that everybody in the sandbox is trying to help. So we have to put them at the center stage and treat them as customers, just like any business would. And so I think if, if there is a lot of good things in the social enterprise, the main thing being compassion, which is the essence of life, but there's execution excellence on the for-profit side and the business side, so if you can bring compassion to the business and bring the execution excellence from the business to the nonprofit sector, I think we'll create a better world. Brilliant. Next uh, question. My name is Fred and I am from Milan. Uh, we are one of the partners to the Big Suit Sandbox. So one of the questions I have is that when you look at the ecosystem enablers like the Big Suit Sandbox, uh, one of the gaps that we see in the nonprofit space is collaboration. Everybody talks about it, nobody does it. So we just don't see a lot of collaboration happening between the non-profit space to see how do organizations come together, share their skills to really look at scale. So I just want to uh, you know, put this together in terms of so how do you see the ASO sandbox really playing a role in maybe to force collaborations initially because they don't happen so easily okay. in the non-profit space. At a vichar ke par, at thought level, so bottoms of work but global thought. इन दोनों को अगर कंबाइन करते हैं दोनों को जोड़ते हैं तो काम हम जो भी कर रहे हैं वो एक एक वृहत और एक बड़े विचार के उसके लिए कर रहे हैं जब ये विचार ये चीज़ मन में आती है तो कई भावनाओं का उदय होता है एक भावना जिसका उदय होता है कि संवेदनशीलता वो भी मेरे साथ काम कर रहा है मैं कैसे उसकी हेल्प कर सकता हूँ और वो मेरे मेरी कैसे सहायता एक संवेदनशीलता की बात है दूसरा एक समझ की बात है कि यहाँ डायनेमिक्स क्या है यहाँ पर क्या चल रहा है और तीसरी चीज़ मैं कहूँगा सामाजिकता कि जो मैं काम कर रहा हूँ मैं एक व्यक्ति के रूप में एक संस्था के रूप में हूँ लेकिन एक सामाजिक काम है जिसमें हर एक की भूमिका चाहिए तो ये तीन विचार जो हैं ग्लोबल थॉट के लिए जो तीन विचार संवेदनशीलता समझ और सामाजिकता इन तीनों को जब अगर हम जोड़ देंगे तो ये कई चीज़ें हम इसमें और अच्छे से आगे बढ़ सकते हैं जो हम बॉटम सब काम कर रहे हैं वो एक वृहत विचार के तहत हो सकता है वेल इफ आई कैन मे बी कॉमेंट अलिल बट ऑन दैट यू नो आई थिंक इन द फॉर प्रॉफिट सेक्टर यू हैव बैंक रपसी इफ समथिंग डजेंट वर्क इट 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 हैज टू एंड बिकॉज दर इज नो कैश टू टेक इट फॉरवर्ड एंड देन दर इज मर्जर्स एंड एक्विजिशन राइट यू कम्बाइन थिंग्स बिकॉज दे बिकम मोर इफेक्टिव एंड सो ऑन In the non-profit sector, I think we all have to come with, with some of those structures. If something isn't working, how do we end it so that we don't waste a lot of resources? Both in the United States where I live and in India, we have 1.5 million non-profit organizations, right? And a lot of them are dysfunctional, but they don't go away. Out of the 1.5 million in both countries, I would say probably less than 100,000 of them or maybe even 10,000 of them are doing any meaningful work. So you have millions of non-profits which just exist on paper and they chew up resources but can't get to scale or can't do anything. Even in the for-profit sector, a lot of the companies you know, get up to some level of revenue and then they never grow. Because the entrepreneur is unwilling to collaborate, is unwilling to combine with somebody else or buy things, whatever. So, Social entrepreneurs who put the cause ahead of their own ego or their own identity, I think are the people who will start coming up with new structures within that sector. So I think it's up to, up to all of us. And, and Sandbox is a fantastic tool to bring people together so that they start trusting each other, learning from each other, and then they can find ways to collaborate. But, but I think it's a, it's a new field that we all have to innovate and, and find ways to 
scale because you know this is a country of 1.2 billion people and we can't have organizations that do 10 15 100 000, even so we have to find new ways to bring things together so that we can have meaningful impact thank you you want to say something uh, no i think i think all i would say is that you know because not for profit uh, to desh's point involves a lot of compassion and want to see change happen and you want to see it happen you know at scale you know of course you're focused on your own efforts but at the end of the day if you're working and you're seeing other not for profits in that region also creating impact learnings on how to scale becomes a very important one you know we've been talking about for example the akshay patra organization how they you know achieve scale i think one of the big things is how collaboration can happen for not for profits to learn from each other how to build scale because there are issues and one of the big issues comes is resources you know and how do you tap into them and i think that's something that you know of course at a sandbox level we'll try and see how to bring collaboration together but i'm hoping that you know this question if it's come in your mind it's in most people's minds in the room so effectively you would reach out and collaborate because of that you know uh, i shouldn't be passing comments but i run agastya and i was sitting here and i had no idea that a kid would come and talk about agastya or that somebody would come and do a sort of uh, mime on Augustia. Now, nobody came to me and said, Ramji, uh, do you authorize a collaboration with two or three other organizations? I didn't even know it was happening. It was probably the initiative of the local organization here, people like Ajay Suman. So they can actually create this collaboration. And I was very pleased to hear it. And it's a much faster way of doing it than to have all this highfalutin, let's have a strategic connection and all that. Uh, he just takes it and makes it happen. So that's another way of doing it. Sir. So myself, Sam Babu Patel from BHU, Joint Registrar. Bagal ke gaon mein sir, jo bhi samay mujhe milta hai apni office se, mein jata hun aur dos mukhe samay se hamen paata hun sir, ki ek to sir, gaon ke muhane pe hi pehli lagi sarkari bhaang aur sarkari sarab ki dukaan. जिसके वजह से गांव में जो अभी सन्नी जैसा कानपुर का किस्सा बताया कि पैसा इन चीज़ों में खर्च होता है दूसरी जो समस्या मुख्य है सर कि ज़मीन जो हमारे गांव में है वो जमींदारी एवोल्यूशन एक्ट आने के बाद भी आज कागज़ पे ज़मीन कुछ है और एक्चुअल ज़मीन पे ज़मीन कुछ कम है सर जिसकी वजह से काफ़ी पैसा कचहरी में जाता है सर मैं अगल बगल के गाँव में जाकर जब भी समय मिलता है सर मोटिवेट कर रहा हूँ और कुछ बच्चों के लिए कंपटीशन कराया है कंपटीशन के समय स्थिति ये रहती है कि गार्जियन साथ में खड़े रहते हैं कि ये बच्चे खाली हों तो चले हमारे खेतों में काम करें जो मुख्य समस्या गांव की है सर कि गांव का जो गार्जियन है उसके पास पैसे नहीं हैं कि बच्चों को आगे बढ़ावें मैं जितना अपने लेवल पर हो रहा है सर मैं जाके बच्चों के साथ लग के ताकि इंटर किसी तरह पढ़ के सर हायर एजुकेशन के लिए आगे आवें लेकिन उनका मुख्य पैसा जो कचहरी में जा रहा है सर मैं मोटिवेट कर रहा हूँ इसमें मैं आप लोगों से थोड़ा सहयोग चाहूँगा कि कैसे इसको सर किया जाए ताकि ये पैसा सर उनका बचे और एजुकेशन में खर्च हो सर थैंक यू सर यू लाइक टू ओके विल टेक वन मोर क्वेश्चन एंड देन डू इट यस आई एम अ टीचर फॉर लर्नर इन द बिजनेस स्कूल माय बेसिक क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज यूनिवर्सिटी सॉरी समथिंग डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द इशू वी टॉक हियर कैन वी ट्रेन सोशल एंटरप्रेन्योर्स नंबर 1 आर दे बोर्न इफ वी कैन ट्रेन how we can collaborate to train them that is the basic question okay we got it so two questions jaisa ki kaha gaya aise systems banaye jahan par cheeze aasani se ho sake is tarah ke jhagde bhi wahan pe suljhaye ja sake local star par ye cheeze ho to zyada behtar hai jab ye cheeze bahar jati hain to ye aur kharche ka aur mushkilon ka aur वैमनस्य का कारण बनती तो कैसे हम बॉटम्स अप में लोकल जितनी चीज़ें हम कर सकते हैं लोकल स्तर पर स्थानीय स्तर पर ये की है लेकिन स्थानीय स्तर पर करते वक्त विचार जो है वो ग्लोबल होना चाहिए यूनिवर्सल होना चाहिए यूनिवर्सल ज़्यादा अच्छा शब्द है ग्लोबल से तो उसके लिए जो तीन चीज़ें मैं कह रहा हूँ कि हर व्यक्ति में वो चीज़ पहुँचनी चाहिए उसमें एक संवेदनशीलता है दूसरा जिसको हम कह सकते हैं तर्क और चित्रण लॉजिक एंड क्रिएटिविटी तो हम लॉजिक और क्रिएटिविटी में ये देखते हैं कि यहाँ पर क्या हो रहा है क्या पॉसिबल है क्या डिफिकल्टीज हैं उसका एनालिसिस उसका हम तर्क द्वारा विश्लेषण कर सकें फिर उसमें क्या करना है ये पता लगा सकें 
ये दूसरी चीज़ है और तीसरी चीज़ सामाजिकता है कि मैं अकेला नहीं हूँ मेरा परिवार भी अकेला नहीं है मैं जुड़ा हुआ हूँ आज जो कमी आ गई है शायद तीनों स्तर पर कमी है पर तीसरे स्तर पर ज़्यादा कमी आ गई है पहले स्तर पर पहले स्तर पर और तीसरे स्तर पर कमी आ गई है दूसरा स्तर बढ़ गया है तर्क और वो सब बढ़ गया है लेकिन संवेदनशीलता और सामाजिकता इन दोनों में कमी आई है तो इसके लिए बॉटम लेवल पे हम क्या कर सकते हैं मैं भी बॉटम अप एक्शन पे विश्वास रखता हूँ लेकिन मुझे यूनिवर्सल थाट भी चाहिए जिससे कि ये जो बॉटम सब में सब जो हो रहा है और जो प्रश्न चीज़ें आ रही हैं उसको देखते हुए मैं कैसे दूसरे से जुड़ के काम कर सकूँ और मेरी दिशा क्या है मैं तय कर सकूँ मेरे गाँव की क्या दिशा है मैं ये तय कर सकूँ तो इसके लिए तो गांव के स्तर पर ये काम करना होगा जिससे कि ये ये जो पहली और तीसरी चीज़ जिसमें कमी आ गई है इसके इसकी ओर हम काम कर सकें सो आई थिंक इफ आई अंडरस्टूड द सेकंड क्वेश्चन इट वाज मोर लाइक आर ऑन्टरप्रनर्स बॉर्न और कैन दे बी ट्रेंड इज दैट इज दैट द सो आई कैन जस्ट टेल यू दिस नो आई बीन बॉर्न इन इन अ बिजनेस फैमिली एंड एज आई वॉज ग्रोइंग अप आई वॉज ऑलवेज I always thought that I would do business but at the end of the day I've got so many members in my family who despite being born in business or in entrepreneurship have chosen not to do that and do other things so to me I I think that there is it's I don't believe that you're born with it I think at the end of the day there is something which can you know make you realize that this is what I want to do and then there is some instances in your life or something which becomes your calling and you say I want to I want to become that and then you go out and seek the tools to be able to you know train yourself to be able to you know connect with people who will enable you to go after your calling so i think at some level for me personally it's something that yes you can be and you know there there is a way for you to find uh, you know tools to 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 move forward in the path that you choose to move so to me you know there are some people born but i feel that at the end of the day you get your calling and then you could be you know attaching yourself with an ecosystem to move forward in that direction that's my view on this you know i, I think it's a little bit like what sangal ji is saying uh, the three aspects of a human being and if you can just give people a little taste of that empowerment you know i think all the lead students here you know i think before they come to the lead they feel like they're powerless and and in the lead program they pick whatever little problem but once the problem gets into your head you can't stop thinking about it you become feverish and then finally you think that you found a way to crack it and that's the aha moment right that's the moment when suddenly you start feeling empowered that you can actually make a change and so entrepreneurship is something it can be taught it can be something it's giving people a taste of that ability to take that initiative and be an active participant in life now what can universities do what can ecosystems do what can the sandboxes do you ultimately the people who takes that initiative and wants to be entrepreneurial and wants to be an entrepreneur is the roller coaster right for them and they have to do it themselves because it's again their own journey their own ups and downs and everything else but the rest of the ecosystem can keep reducing the friction so that the likelihood of their success improves to me the closest analogy that i can think of is like childbirth every time a baby is born for that mother and father it's a very unique experience even though there's 7 billion babies that are born right now in the world for that particular mother and father it's a very unique experience it's a roller coaster ride it's like wow you know something happens something doesn't happen but if you look at let's say the childbirth over the course of last 100 years 100 years ago a lot of them did not work out you know kids died but now it's improved quite a bit and and where it's not working we're all working on making it better so entrepreneurship again has to be that unique journey that people take up on their own but the ecosystem the education system the universities and so on can teach the tools and give them the proper training so that their opportunity to succeed goes up so i think we need to work on both sides we need to work on the policy side to make sure the friction is reduced but then on the other side to enable everybody to say 
I want to lead an active life and I want to be the change maker as opposed to somebody who just accepts everything as it is. So, yeah. so thank you very much. I think there were great insights. What Desh said about we can all complain about the world, but break it down into small bits, show some micro successes, feel good about it, keep moving step by step up. He talks about tapping into the youth, leveraging technology. The professor gave a wonderful insight about why does it happen naturally in nature, but not among human beings. That's a lot of food for thought, which I'm going to spend some time mulling over on the flight back to Bangalore. So thank you again, all of you. It was brilliant, and thank you.